Very cool. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dilrup Jai Singer, right? It's uh, obviously not a name you hear around these parts, is it? No, it's uh, native to, to Tamworth. And I... Uh... <laughs> Whoa! How dare you laugh at my Tamworth heritage? That's bullshit. <laughs> Proud Tamworthian. No, it's a Sri Lankan name, right? That's where I'm originally from. I'm from Sri Lanka. I've been here now 12 years in the last five years or so. Yeah, one Sri Lankan. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Been here a nice five years, right? Uh, but uh, you get to do some cool gigs uh, around the country. Like, you know, this is awesome. This is so cool. It's Vitaly. I'm so excited. But I also do some weird gigs. Like recently, I did some comedy on a cruise ship. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Sri Lankan who voluntarily got back on a boat. I am. I am this government's wet dream. They're like, yo, man, go. Fucking stay there if you can. Take your pal in the crowd with you as well if you want. <laughs> Cool. I enjoy doing it. Look, uh, I've been here 12 years. Like I said, 12 years ago, I came here uh, for university to get a degree in accounting because, you know, some stereotypes are true. And, um, <laughs> and the plan was quite simple. All I had to do, like, my parents spent a fortune on me, and all I had to do was get the degree, go back to Sri Lanka, get a job, get married, have kids, and then die. Simple. <laughs> but things went off track for me in my first week of arriving here because in my first week, I got introduced to draft beer and white women, and <laughs> just. <laughs> All my priorities got reshuffled, and here we are, 12 years later, I go around the country telling jizz jokes to strangers. So, uh, <laughs> you can imagine how proud my parents are. Obviously, I mean, there's things that I love being here. Obviously, uh, uh, things that I enjoy about being here are things like access to better healthcare, access to better education. But the thing that I cherish the most, if I'm being honest, is the fact that Australia taught me how to skull pints. Because <laughs> I barely drank when I was in Sri Lanka, but now I sink piss like a fucking champion. Like, I, oh, I have medals with how good I drink. Like, I may have been raised in Colombo, but like, this part is Aussie. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Like the rest of me is imported. This is 100% Australian beef, right? I, I be, check this shit. I became so Aussie that I traded in my six pack for a goon bag. That's what happened there. <laughs> I like how not everyone's committed to that. I don't think he's ever had a six pack. You're right. I've always been a proper fat fuck, but I. Uh, people get uncomfortable when I refer to myself as being fat, mainly because I carry my obesity well because I'm a good looking dude. But then. <laughs> scientific fact, look at the symmetry. Um, I... But also, it's because, you know what, when I refer to myself as being fat, it's not an opinion, it's scientific, because according to my height, my weight is way too much. I mean, if at all, I probably have a height problem, really. I, uh... I suggested it to a doctor once, and he looked at me confused, like, height, what? It's like I farted in cupcake to me. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? But I rather realized that it's time, you know, recently there have been some signs that I should have lost some weight, you know, signs like, like mirrors and uh, Wayne scales and broken Wayne scales and the looks on people's faces when they think I'm about to sit next to them on a plane. Yeah, <laughs> shut up, you know you do it. Don't act like you did, you just got caught out. That's what happened there. I know, because as soon as I walk past you, you go, yes. Um, <laughs> But yes, some of the problems that I find difficult now that I've turned 31, which I didn't have when I was younger, the mere act of inhaling and exhaling causes me to break out into a sweat. <laughs> which is annoying because I do that fairly regularly. Um, another thing is I snore so loudly that I wake myself up. Do you know how brutal that is? Give us a cheer if you've ever been slept next to someone who snored. Yeah, you know how annoying it is. Imagine if you woke up, madam, and you looked around, there's no one there. It's just, it was brutal. I go from at one moment dreaming away of like, burgers and dim sims and some shit, and the next moment, I just, my subconscious gets hungry enough to swallow my own tongue, just lying there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what happened there? Did I get tea back by a ninja? Every night. <laughs> It's true, I got, a, I got a gift, a voucher to go bungee jumping, right? And I finally, uh, it was like a really exciting dream of mine, right? Because um, it used to be on top of my bucket list. Well, second, because on top was to get a bucket of chicken. But, <laughs> but my new bucket list, right? I was so excited about it. I looked into it, turns out can't do it, too heavy. Which ironically made me want to throw myself off a bridge. <laughs> I have to be careful these days when I talk on my touchscreen phone because if I smile too widely, my cheek hangs up on the call. Like that. 
is a genuine problem. And look at this stupid happy face. It happens so often. I just tell my friends I'm with a shitty phone connection. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is my time. Thank you so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of the show.